Welcome to FixItForgetIt.com Where projects and ideas come together Hi, this is John Leffler from FixItForgetIt.com This is the first in a three video series where we're going to look at installing PVC posts repairing vinyl siding and installing PVC handrails. In this first video we're going to look at some of the things we encountered as we installed these PVC posts and if you haven't already seen my second video on how to repair vinyl siding right in here this vinyl siding had some holes and cracks that I repaired you can't tell anything ever happened so if you haven't seen that video you may want to go check that out so that you can repair any damage in your vinyl siding. So let's get started on this first video as we install some PVC posts. This is my front porch railing and posts, support posts. This is supposedly a non-load bearing set up as you can see we constantly have peeling of the paint over here down at the bottom of this post and some of the other posts it's rotting and splitting and we have to go in from time to time and use some um, compound to put in there and patch it up and we're just getting tired of all that so we're going to replace this, both the railing and the posts. We got our materials to replace this and I've been so impressed with the company so far that uh, I thought I would do this little video in case it helps you out. It's a company called USA Vinyl and their brand name is Weatherables and you can find their material if you go to usavinyl.com or weatherables.com as you see right there you'll be able to look at what they have to offer and one of the things I loved about this company they have everything you need right down to the screws and mounting hardware the rails the spindles, the posts, they have everything. If you have a little table that you can set up and put all your tools on there, it'll really make things easier as this job rolls out. Since these posts are non-load bearing, uh, I could just start tapping this right down at the bottom and take it out of here. The thing I'm concerned about is as that lurches sideways I'm afraid that eh, because there's not a lot of room for it to come out there on the bottom that it may damage the aluminum cladding up here. So I cut it in two. That should allow me to Pop this out of here. Just like that. So I will continue to remove that. Then we'll have a look at what's up there. This is the first post that I opened and it has this scuffing along here. Some of it's just, I don't know, some sort of uh, almost like a greasy soot or something on there that hopefully will come off. But there is one place, and I don't know if it'll show up, right here. I'm hoping the others look better. It's gouged right there too. 
there and there. For cutting these posts, I'm using a chop saw with a fiber wheel and I use that to cut the aluminum tube. If you go slow, it won't heat up on you and clog. So far it's been working well. For cutting the PVC posts, I'm using a circular saw, it's just battery powered. You want to make sure you have a carbide tipped blade on your circular saw and just go nice and slow. Overall I've been happy with weatherables. Their customer service is fantastic. Their products are nice. The only thing is, especially on these posts, they could be a little more careful on their handling. I don't know if you can see this, but I have some scuffing and scratching in here. Uh, one that I showed you earlier was worse than this one. But um, hopefully I'll be able to clean that up enough that it won't show. I'll have to try to face this scuffed up side once again in a, a direction that's least objectionable. You can clean the scuffs and things off of these posts. Just want to go carefully, uh, but just get yourself a pan of water and a clean rag. Get a little soft scrub. That works pretty well. Something else you can use is charcoal lighter fluid. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but charcoal lighter fluid is a fabulous solvent to use on things like plastic because it is really mild. It does a great job of cutting stuff. Uh, if you get glue, like if you want to get some uh, duct tape adhesive or things that you would normally use goo be gone or a product like that this charcoal lighter fluid is sort of a poor man's goo gone or whatever they call it um, it really works great and it it does not hurt sensitive products like plastics and it's really inexpensive so we'll continue on with this project and uh, show you some more things as we go. This is a nice little work table. Really like it. Has these clamps to hold the post in place. It's a nice soft vinyl so it won't scuff the post up. It is a Pegasus table. Works. W O R X. Works Pegasus. And you want to have a brush handy just so as you're making cuts on here and debris collects, you want to make sure you brush it off before you put your next post down. I'm going to be cutting this end of the post off. I laid my measurement out and I made the measurement 9 sixteenths of an inch smaller than my actual opening where the post goes. So you want to make sure you put duct tape on the post to protect it. Let the wide part of the shoe on your saw ride up on the part of the post that you're going to be cutting off. I'm going to be cutting along this right side of the duct tape. So when I get my guide lined up with that, 
as you can see just the small part of my saw shoe is going to be riding over on the post that I want to be in pristine condition and is actually going to be installed so the duct tape will protect the post from scuffing or scoring from that little small section of the saw shoe. Really important because this stuff will gouge and scuff up. I now have the aluminum structural support tube cut that goes inside the post. I just cleaned this up. I used a flat file to clean up the outside, rat tail file to clean up the inside. Doesn't have to be a work of art, but you do want it fairly clean uh, because you're going to have to spin and rotate that in order to install the screws, and I will show you how that works in a bit. This bottom mounting bracket has these inserts that go into it. Um, these things can really be a pain to get in there. Uh, well, three of them will go in fine, but the fourth one is quite hard to get in there. You just have to twist and turn and pinch, and you can eventually get it. This is the second one I've done. So stick with it, and you will get there. This is one of the quirky things about installing these posts. These inserts, little reinforcement uh, pieces of vinyl that go down inside the post, uh, and then the aluminum tube slides inside these little reinforcement components. See if I can get that to go in there with one hand. Okay, um, they really want to pop off very easily and I just put a piece of duct tape around there to kind of hang on to them. I also put a piece of duct tape around the bottom and I put it on there in a way that it would grab a hold of this is the mounting plate. They're the same on the top and the bottom and uh, you can see this tab here that is where your final screw mounts the vinyl square post to this mounting plate. You uh, run a screw through there. So if I can get this in here, I will show you on this side. What is supposed to happen? Move this thing a little bit. Okay, when you have this thing stuck in place, getting ready to install it, you're supposed to be able to twist this, or actually you twist, you twist the post itself, and as you twist the post, it will kick sideways and expose these screws. Well, you can turn the top one very easily, but that bottom one, it does not want to turn because of those weird reinforcing strips that they have in there. So you can't twist it much at all. It's not going to be enough to get in there and drill those holes the way you would like to. Okay, I have drilled out the holes in the concrete and installed some Tapcon screws or just concrete screws. And there's really not enough room there to drill the holes with the post in place. You would wind up scuffing up the post. So I just leveled it up, took a pencil, outlined the mounting bracket, pulled the post loose, moved it to the side, Drew the holes, drilled the holes, put everything back in place, and then fastened the screws down. You also may want to get one of these jobs 
it's uh, you know it has a little spindle here and uh, it's just a flexible just put it on your drill little flexible shaft for your screwdriver bit you also may want to get a nice long Phillips screwdriver because you may need it to snug those down a little and uh, you may especially need it up here in the top. So I'm ready to twist this thing into place. When you get to the point where you want to secure these posts in place, you want to make sure you have the top and bottom skirt aiming the correct direction and I just used a little painter's tape to temporarily secure them in the mid section of the post and up at the top where that bracket screws in to the beam up there I used I think these were a number 10 by inch and a half, inch and a quarter, somewhere in that area. I think it was maybe an inch and a quarter. Um, stainless screw. And you can see how it's tapered there, nice and flat on the top. You want to make sure you don't have any sort of a rounded top because that post needs to spin past that screw. From mounting them to the bottom, I used a inch and a quarter by three sixteenths Thorex cement screw, and right there for securing the post to the mounting bracket that's inside the post, I used. number eight by three quarter inch stainless steel screws. Uh, the screws up the top are stainless as well. I mounted that screw nine sixteenths of an inch above the concrete and up on the top had the same measurement nine sixteenths below the uh, ceiling line. In order to put on these skirts and secure them into place, you're going to use silicone. They also say you can use PVC cement. Uh, there could be problems with that. You know, it sets up so fast it can run and so on, so I'm going to use silicone. But you want the silicone to grip that little inside lip. And in order to achieve that, you'll see I have a line right there an inch and a quarter above the concrete and I just happen to have a little piece of wood that has that measurement so I just lay it around as a guide and mark that then I will put a bead of mold resistant silicone right around that line all the way a nice heavy bead then when I drop that skirt down on there it'll grab that lip on the inside and it'll be high enough to grab the lip but not so high that it oozes up out of the top of here which obviously you don't want to happen so it'll catch right in there somewhere and it'll do the same thing on the top and that should finish up this post before you put your silicone on you want to clean this so that you get a real good bond of the silicone to the vinyl. I just take a paper towel, fold it up. I put a little denatured alcohol on there. Vargo Outdoors makes this great little alcohol squeeze bottle. And I really like these. It's made for camping, for little alcohol fuel stoves and that sort of thing. But I use this around the house a lot for various things. 
the silicone I'm using is made by GE. It's a 10 year mold free. Love the texture and consistency of this silicone. Uh, it, it seems much nicer than your typical clear silicone. This, this seems to flow a little more smoothly, doesn't blob up and doesn't seem to be uh, quite as gel-like, if you will, as regular clear, clear silicone. This is easier to caulk with. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I have a light almond that just happens to show up nicely on the white vinyl as you're putting a bead around. And because it's not going to show above the skirt, it doesn't matter that it's a slightly different color. So I will put that bead around and then we'll have a look at it. Uh, the other thing is, it holds very well once it's dried up. These skirts that I've already installed, I've tugged on those, and this silicone is holding real well, so I'm very happy with that. I've been putting about a quarter of an inch thick bead of silicone on there. That seems to be working nicely. So we're ready to drop this bottom skirt into place. Let's see how that goes. And that is it. So just let that dry. Do the same thing up top. But of course at the top you're going to have to clamp it in place until it dries. Gravity of course will be fine to hold that bottom one in place. This one on the top, I used a couple of clamps. You want to make sure that you have real clean rubber pads on there so it protects the vinyl and that Hopefully we'll hold that nicely in place until that dries. I have three posts installed. Overall I'm happy with the way it looks. The installation could have been thought out better on these and the handling of the posts is really lacking. I've spent probably a couple of hours using a 600 grit sandpaper and wet sanding gouges and scuffs and, and uh, grit that has gotten ground into these posts so not happy with that they could really improve the handling on these speaking of handling uh, as you take your posts out you want to make sure I don't know if you can see it because it's also white but I have a little piece of 2 by 4 under that post. When you bring them out of the box you want to set them on something like that that won't scuff them up. Have one in the front and the back there. All six posts are installed now. I'm happy with the finished product. They were a little difficult to install because of some of the uh, things like the mounting brackets should have been made a little larger. Overall, I'm real happy with it, though. Uh, to me, it was worth the extra effort to get the exact look I wanted. So, the next thing is going to be that little porch right there. I'm going to replace those posts and rails. Then I'm going to come back, repair the vinyl siding, where the old rails were on this larger porch and then I will get the rail system installed for the larger porch and this project will be over. I have the old posts and rails out of this small porch now. A little bit of a mess. Some of it is cleaned up. I got the old mounting plates out of here. They were all rusty. Scrubbed up the rust as much as I could get it cleaned out of there and there were four pretty good sized holes here 
So I uh, drilled those out and cleaned them up good. Put a little hydraulic cement down in there on both sides. Because these new posts are going to have to be mounted down in there and I have to drill new holes. And the new holes are going to wind up being fairly close to these old holes so I wanted that reinforced. This looks a little ratty. I'm going to clean that up the best I can, patch those holes and sand them. We're making progress on this project. Because I had some fairly large thin repairs that I needed to do on this aluminum, I did not use the all-purpose putty. It's great for smaller repairs but it just sets up too fast to do large thin areas. Instead I used a DAP painters acrylic latex caulk. Just let it dry up and then sanded it down so that worked well. And when it comes to these posts, as you install these it comes with a metal leveling plate I found that the teeth are so large in these screws that they just tended to hang up on these leveling plates and heave the post this way and that just didn't work out well for me. I just took it right out, used these little teal colored screws, our leveling screws, there's one on all four sides, just leveled it up on the concrete, then I drilled these concrete screws down into the holes that I made with a quarter inch drill masonry bit. You'll find that these screws are quite tight going down in there. But this mending or uh, leveling plate, I would suggest not using it if you're on cement. If you're on wood, I can see where you would probably need it. But these leveled up very nicely just leveling on the concrete itself. You put these um, concrete screws in and run them down till they're within maybe a half inch or so of, of uh, bottoming out. Then you use these screws to level it up. And once you have it level, then you snug down the concrete screws. I'll put a bead of silicone all the way around the base of this post. I will then up in the top. I'm just going to wedge a little piece of wood and these are just you know, little tapered wood wedges that you get for installing interior house doors, exterior doors, whatever you need to shim up. Just little wedge shims. I'm going to put that in there, snap it off, and then I'm going to run a bead of silicone all the way around the inside here on the top. This, when these are tapped down in here, makes it very secure, should hold up well. That way I will be able to secure these little posts without having any screws showing up anywhere. Another advantage of using these little shims is you can level this up a bit. So in my case, it worked out for me to have one in the front and one on the right side. Those are now snapped off. I'll put a bead of silicone around there. That allowed me just a little bit to level this. It isn't perfectly level, but it's real close. So, I think that's going to work out well. I have the silicone around the bottom put a little bit on the uh, inside of the post here in those little inserts. It's quite solid. You have about 15 sixteenths of an inch or close to an inch between this lip here and the bottom of the skirt. I just came up an inch dropped a line, cleaned it with denatured alcohol, put a little bead of silicone around there, cleaned the inside of this with denatured alcohol, come up on here, 
drop it down. That's high enough to grab that bottom lip without anything oozing out the top. And we're almost done with this post. I now have the bead of silicone around the inside of the post. Skirts on. Have a little bead of silicone around the inside of the cap. Drop it on there. And that post is finished. Came out real well. It's very solid both directions. That won't be going anywhere. I'll do the other post and then I can get these rails in. Small posts are completely done now. Turned out real well. They're nice and solid. Look good. They're level. The aluminum cladding that was in here, it was uh, messed up a bit. So that's been cleaned and patched and painted ready for the rails. That is the last of the project back there in the boxes. Those are the rails for all of this. So we will get this done and then toss some rails out on this part of the porch and this project will be over. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I'll have some affiliate links down in the description. You're welcome to use those if you'd like. That'll take you right directly to the some of the products that I showed you here. This is John from FixItForgetIt.com and we will see you in the next video.